Welcome to Publishing Power. This is Joellen. I am so glad to be hosting today. We have fantastic guests with us, Chelsea Hensley, and she Hi. is here to talk to us about marketing our books. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, how are you? I am great. I'm so glad you could come over and visit us from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Is that where we are? That's where we are. We're right near the beach. Can't beat That's it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let me introduce Chelsea. She is a social media marketing specialist. She focuses on e-commerce and personal brands. And for authors, personal brands is what it is all about to electrify their community, resulting in a profitable return on investment. She blends SEO, which is search engine optimization for those of you who are new, targeted advertising and creative writing to create multi-platform strategies to reach audiences. So she's helping you build that foundation, that platform that we all need. She helps you engage customers and strengthen brand recognition. And she's also a fierce proponent of the remote working lifestyle and cappuccino enthusiast to make it all happen, <laughs> aren't we all? Here we go, cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> I want to chat about how she can help our marketing efforts today. So welcome, Chelsea. And you find her at ChelseaHensley.com, so I don't forget to mention that. How are you? I'm good. It's, uh, it's so great to see you since we haven't seen each other in uh, a couple years. Yeah, we did admit we're both uh, digital nomads, so, so we're working online and traveling freely. I've got my family, so it gets a little bit harder, but I'm down in Costa Rica now, and you're, we're both on the same, at least on the same side of the hemispheres now, so that's good. Time zone. Yeah, same time zone. Imagine that. That's fantastic. So we met at Digital Nomad Girls and have been in contact ever since. And I know that Chelsea works so well with Facebook and Instagram and other social media, which can be quite overwhelming when you've just finished writing a book and all you like to do is sit and type or write or talk about books or read books. And suddenly you have to be a marketer because that's part of it. So Chelsea, you have a presentation to kind of share with me today and let me ask my questions, right? Absolutely. And I hope that it's super concise for all the authors who think that social media marketing could be a little daunting or overwhelming. No, no, no. We're, we're going to walk away with some really good things here. Basically, we're going to do some self-branding on social media and starting their fan base today, right? This is so fantastic because there, even if you are an established author and you still have a community, I find that even when you bring in an expert like yourself, there's always some little tidbit there that we can pick up and use. So again, just tune in on that and if it brings in an extra 100 or 200 followers, then you've really won the day. So... Great. Show us what, how to market your self-published book. Yes, absolutely. And again, this is all, like you mentioned, to get that extra 100 or 200, you know, starting out small and building the foundations is so important. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So that's really um, what I think that the, the main focus of this chat should be. So this is a little bit about myself. Joe kind of touched on it, but mostly I work with e-commerce and building brand profiles for clients and audiences around the world. So the basics that we want to start with is building your Facebook presence, you know, make sure that you're not using your personal Facebook page for a lot of marketing. Even if you have 5,000 friends, that's fantastic. Go ahead and create a professional page as well. And you can always share that page with your 5,000 friends. Being professional and having a branded profile photo that matches your cover photo that's professionally designed is really a key element here. So when you say branding, we're talking about colors and basically your fonts and how you present yourself. It's your persona more or less, right? Absolutely. And if you can, if you have one book versus a variety of publications, use the same fonts that are on your book title as well as the same themes and concepts and color tones. Um, and that way your brand recognition will really stick to that potential customer. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, invest in a headshot if you can to really own that authority online. I build trust with people that I feel are, you know, leaders in their industry. And if you want to come across as a leader in your niche, you really have to invest the time and sometimes the money into these elements in order to gain that return on investment. Well, the, the author's headshot actually goes on the book and a book is judged by its cover. So we do say in the same way that you invest in a book cover, you need to invest in your headshot. And, you know, I was just online yesterday. I'm going to the London Book Fair and I booked my time there and I saw as an Airbnb event or activity, you could actually do photos around London. So if you're looking for a photographer, funny enough, if you look wherever you live, there's probably somebody doing photos and um, it's well worth the time and it's fun. I mean, you actually get a tour of London while you 
do your headshots. It sounds like fun. I love that. And it's all about personal branding, right? Exactly. So create that brand, create your personality, make sure that whatever you're putting out there, that's who you want to be all the time. I think definitely. And, and with that personal branding, you know, add an extra layer with your call to actions, make sure on your about your cover, maybe your book isn't released yet. So you put the publishing release date on the cover photo as well. So people know what action they should be taking. Once you've got them, you've got to hook them. Right. I mean, this is not about just communicating. It's also telling them what to do. And people trust you when you know what you want them to do. If you are just communicating, well, that's nice, but why are we engaging? What, what, do, I, what do I get? And I think if they say, okay, I'm going to learn about this new book or I'm going to see about this new person, then it's exciting. It's an adventure. So great. Definitely. And like we mentioned, it really is about defining that online presence. If you're not familiar with the 12 brand archetypes, do a quick Google search, find out what archetype relates most to you as an author, as well as who you want to portray with your publications. It could be a couple of examples are a caretaker. Maybe you're the explorer, the adventurer, the jester. Are you, are you the funny guy? So really take a look at those and be sure to build your online persona around a specific voice. Right. Exactly. And, and those are very fun. I remember going through these at the beginning and it's quite, a, it's kind of like a personality test. Who am I or who do I want to be? And be true to yourself. Don't try to be innocent if you're, you know, a ruler because <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. Really hone in on that. You know, maybe you are a little controversial and that could also help garner impressions online. If you are on, on Twitter and you're responding to really popular, famous accounts, Maybe you have a, a unique point of view that some other people don't agree with. And, you know, what is that, that phrase? There's no bad publicity. I mean. Well, we've seen that in, for truth in, in the world nowadays. That's for sure. Definitely. So it is about harnessing that online, um, you know, unique brand for yourself. And once you get started building that archetype for yourself, then you can create strategies using social media platforms such as Facebook. That's going to be the easiest way to start out. And I recommend a couple tips, which is going into your audience insights if you have a fan base already. And Facebook is really amazing because it allows you to see their age range, sometimes their job titles, sometimes their incomes. You can really take a deep dive into who is paying attention to your content. Right. And then expand on that. Find where your people are and then go, go join them. Bingo. Exactly. Another way to add that layer is by implementing a Facebook pixel on your website or your landing page for your book. And that's a way to gain audience insights and what actions they are specifically taking from your website. This is a little different than Google Analytics. This is a Facebook based feature, but it has incredible power to tell you exactly who your people are. Okay. I'm going to stop you and let you explain <laughs> what a pixel is because I know even though I've used that term a lot, that for, you know, the first year it was around, I was like, pixel, I need a pixel on my website. What's this? You know, I'm thinking it's a little badge. Is it a, you know, a plugin? Is it an app? What is it? And there's just so many things out there nowadays. I'm going to let you tell them, but uh, tell them a little bit what it is and how it works gently. <laughs> gently. Yes. I will try not to get too nerdy about the Facebook pixel, <laughs> but essentially it is a piece of code that you can find in the back end of your Facebook page. You just navigate to events manager and you just copy that code, put it in the header of your website or your landing page. It's really simple there. If you have a WordPress website, there are several plugins you could use. My favorite is called pixel. My site it basically does it for you. But what it does once you set it up is you can see the actions that someone is taking on your website. So maybe they add your book to their cart but they don't buy it. Well, you can find out which page didn't grab them enough. Maybe your payment methods are very complicated and someone checked out or not checked out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, the pixel also allows you to store the data of everyone who hit these specific pages so you could retarget them with an ad later down the road. Say you want to uh, invest in some advertising on Facebook to really ramp up sales, what's better than a warm lead? Someone who's already been to your page and they've already made the steps to buy your book, they just did it. This is a great way to recapture them. It's not as intimidating as it sounds, I swear. 
<laughs> and, and it is very easy, but it is all back end. So you don't actually put it on the front page of your website. You hide it in the coding and then it just does all of its magical work. And the good thing is if you do it now, then even if you're not actively using it, you're still gathering all that information while you figure it out. And data, data, data is very important nowadays. The same as an email is super valuable, so is data. Yes, put it on your website right now, immediately. <laughs> Do not pass go. Even if you're not doing advertising now, you're, you're gonna be thankful that you implemented it as soon as possible. Exactly, exactly. And so with that, you know, content development on your website, if you don't have a blog already, that's a great starter to really portray your voice, as we mentioned before, and utilize those best uh, SEO practices, search engine optimization. As I also touched upon Google Analytics, you can see how people are landing on your website from what keywords so that you know that's the content that people are most interested in. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And that helps you figure it out. And, and you can also go out there and search around on other people's websites, uh, authors who are similar to you, who have the same genre. You can go to their website, click on the properties of their site, and you can see the keywords for their most popular websites. And there's other tools out there. I'm sure you could tell us. Lots that is a very sneaky workaround. I love that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everyone did it. <laughs> yes. Spy on your competitors a little bit. It's healthy. <laughs> well, and these aren't actually your competitors. These are your people. This is your same audience because, you know, you're not stealing an, uh, a reader from another uh, author. And that's kind of interesting that, you know, quite often in business, we think of that, oh, I'm, I'm competing. But actually in the author world, you're just going to the library and you're finding out where you sit in the old fashioned Dewey Decimal side. And once you get to that section, then you just look, okay, who is standing in front of this, the shelf, you know, virtually, and how do I get them to choose my book? So that's a kind of a, a way to do that. You're so right. That's such a unique perspective that for your industry is a little bit different than, than mine. On that same vein, another way that you can also look at not your competitors, but people in your industry, you can, quote, spy on what advertisements they're running on Facebook. Um, now it's a new feature where you just go to the right-hand sidebar on any business or author page and click page transparency and then add library. And under the ad library, you are able to see all the ads that this page is running so that you can kind of get a feel of, you know, what other people are doing, how they're messaging, who they're talking to and, and gain some inspiration from that. Is this just Facebook? Just Facebook, yes. Moving on past the organic side, we can touch upon Facebook ads if that's all right with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone needs to know that. I think I remember the first time that I realized what was happening in Facebook and it was Airbnb kept coming up all the time. I was like, what is this? What does that even mean? You know, and it kept going and going. And then when I clicked on it and then I got more and more and more and I just, oh, okay, these are ads. <laughs> Because you, you kind of can be a little naive and think, oh, this is just cool stuff. And now they sometimes put sponsored or whatever. But it's uh, very powerful to follow people on Facebook and, and other places with the ads. It is. Um, there are ways to make it less expensive. For example, if your budget is small, I always recommend maybe you optimize for impressions or brand awareness. And what that means is you're not necessarily telling Facebook, hey, I want purchases or hey, I want clicks. You're telling Facebook, I just want people to see this ad. The most people who can see this ad for the cheapest possible budget, the better. If you wanted people to take an action off of Facebook, such as going to your website, then I recommend optimizing for traffic clicks as that is the cheapest way to drive people to your site. The other alternatives are landing page views or you could optimize for checkouts. You know, you might decide if your book is $9.99 and it takes $10 to convert them into a customer that maybe those methods aren't the best option for you. So um, brand awareness or traffic clicks. And it says don't drive traffic to Amazon here because it's a competitor, another big tech giant. Ah, oh, see, so that's probably one of our golden nuggets here because what do we do for most authors? Very easy and it's very beneficial and extremely important to update everything in Amazon because there's so much and it, it just filters out there. And that is your SEO besides your own website. You know, Amazon is God in the okay. book world. So it's very important to know how that plays or doesn't play with Facebook. And so is there any workarounds there or, you know, what do we do? We just send them to our website and they can order from there or can they order from Facebook? Do we know anything like that? 
There are workarounds. A lot of times Facebook won't even approve ads that are sent directly to Amazon. If they do, you are going to be paying a premium on that cost per click as a punishment. Obviously, Facebook will not come out and say that, but as we know as professionals, that's the truth. So a great workaround is to have a simple landing page that's built on a WordPress or a Kajabi or um, a Squarespace. And then you can have a button, a simple, you know, whether you want to capture emails, maybe that's your call to action, or if you want to have a button that and then drives them to Amazon. But if you are going to invest in Facebook ads, you will be wasting your dollar sending them directly to Amazon. The other option with that is you can't put a Facebook pixel on Amazon as well. So it's almost got double the magic if you send them to your website so that you can get those cheaper traffic clicks as well as gathering that data in that Facebook pixel that we mentioned. Nice, nice, I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm double whammy. There's also a lot of methods that you can, we, what we call gamifying interaction. Have you ever heard of that before? Well, I have, but I'm going to guess most people haven't. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> it's just a really, you know, jargony speak way of gathering interaction and engagement from your fans. And so some simple ideas are, you know, crowdsourcing your book titles using contests or polls. Twitter has a free poll. Facebook now has a free poll as well. You can also do Instagram in the stories. You can ask questions and have people respond to you. And there's, again, another poll in stories as well. Gotta love those polls, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And if you're on Instagram, so one of the most frustrating things for me as a marketer is knowing that you cannot put a clickable link in Instagram captions. How frustrating is that? <laughs> I hate it. But a really good workaround is to use Linktree, which is a free program. It's a free, you can put it on desktop and it can go in your bio. And then you can have up to 10, I think, links. You want to send it to Amazon, to your website. If there's a contest page, it's on a how to find you. On, on how, how to find, find you. you. Ah, that's good. So it's basically like a, a virtual link of your CV. So all of your contacts. So you could put everything on there from your, for the authors specifically, your Goodreads, your Amazon, your Smashwords, your Bublish, your, all the different ones that you're out there and you're pushing that they can get on there, your Kobo account, your I, your Apples, um, all of that. That's great. great yes. Yes. And it's as simple as saying, you know, link in bio in your captions. Instagram doesn't have that clickable option. This is a really great, great workaround. I use it for free. It's really easy for authors, super user-friendly. Nice. I like it. Yes. Another trending idea is you could always try and utilize Kickstarter. I'm not so sure if that's really popular in your industry, but a lot of um, startups will use Kickstarter to fund their projects or to self-fund the publishing of their work. Right. There, there's Kickstarter is, is um, part of that when you crowdsource. And then there's also for your blogs, if you would like to make passive income, Patreon is very popular now for people to follow and be part of that. And basically that comes down to extra content that you wouldn't normally make available is available to those who are subscribing. And I know people do it for like a dollar a month or something. And, you know, that's for them, it's just a book, but they feel like they're part of your group and it is gamifying in that sense that you're becoming part of this community and you're supporting them and it's such a small amount that you it's a win-win for everyone so I, I think it's really good to to follow on those and gamify is you know just basically getting involved competing getting people to interact as if it's a game and that's fun we all do exactly. that we don't even realize but we do it all the time <laughs> exactly and you don't even realize that you're really building this community out I follow a couple premium podcast um, under Patreon. And I feel like, hey, these are my people. So that is a really, that's a great, you know, uh, product that you just mentioned, Joe. I love Patreon. Oh, Patreon's very good. So Twitter is also another free platform that you can use to your advantage. And Twitter to me is all about finding your tiny community versus I think Facebook, you're a little bit shouting into the void. Twitter, you have the opportunity to connect granularly with somebody on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you find, I mean, I've been reading about bots. How is that affecting it? Just for those of you who aren't aware, there's sometimes it's not real responses you're getting there. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a cyborg who is talking to you. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I think that there is an advantage there with all the bots because if you, as an author, are responding with genuine answers and a real passion for starting a conversation, I think people appreciate that more because it's the antithesis of, all this manufactured conversation. 
Exactly. So I, I think there's a really big opportunity there. And a good way to establish and build upon that is search for some weekly Twitter chat. I'm in a couple for remote working and for marketing. And basically it's, you have a designated hashtag and the moderator will ask questions and then people from all over the world can get on there and use that hashtag and then have a conversation. And, and it's usually an hour long. So if that hour can really get your name out there and your brand recognition that people trust you and develop a relationship with you, go for it, you know? Nice. Nice. I like that one. Yes. And of course, trending topics. If there's a relevant trending topic or hashtag that makes sense for your voice, hop on it. Like I said, start a conversation. But you do have to remember that you are a reflection of your brand online. It will kill your visibility and your reputation if you hop on Twitter and start saying negative things or start causing reactions just for the sake of reactions. So really have to caution people if you want to do that. Maybe you make a separate account that isn't your designated professional account. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we can say much more on that, but I, I hear you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there are several other third-party outlets that I recommend to clients is Cora, again, answering those questions with real, you know, put some time into it. Don't just shove a link to your website on there. People really value time and, and nurturing those leads. And I wouldn't even call them leads, just having a conversation. As well as Medium is a great place if, for lead generation. If you want to put a first chapter or write about something in your niche, you can put it for free on Medium. And Medium has such a large following. I mean, you know, you, your work could be seen on thousands of eyeballs. Mm -hmm. I love medium. And that could also be utilized as a free lead generation tactic. Um, if someone likes their first chapter so much, put a link to the, to where they can download the full version. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. And, and on good reason, you know, just as I was reading down, um, make sure that you've got your author in the same way that Amazon, you have your author profile, make sure it's filled out because it's, just having your picture and your name and your book title is not enough. Give us a little bit. Unfortunately, everyone likes to stalk you nowadays. I mean, <laughs> 10 years ago, and I'm, I'm going back in time here, a decade ago when I started, it was all about hiding behind the screen because stalking was not a good thing and you kept your private life to yourself. Now nobody trusts you if they don't feel like they're connecting with you because our connection is online. So give a little bit of a, a funny tidbit of information about yourself or your passions or your interests, but give them more than just your book a lead. And sometimes even mention any of the groups that you're involved in because they'll join you there. And that's a very good way to do it. And that, that goes with medium. When you're doing that, you're going to have your author bio on your account. And again, join the right ones and on Quora also. So again, it's the self branding is all about having that, that same what headshot, and then having uniform information on your bios again and again. So they, they feel confident and they see it. Consistency, I think, is really super important. Consistency. I love that. That's mm -hmm. such a great word. And it, it is all about your online persona. It all ties back to the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. And some, you know, on that same vein, some bonus ways to connect that um, maybe aren't um, at the top of your list. But one of my favorite recommendations that brands do is they'll create a branded Spotify account. I did one for a 5k race and I put all running songs on there and got a really great reaction from that. So an idea for authors is create your branded account and add playlists that fit the mood or the theme or specific characters that are related to your book. That's very fun. And then also, you know, we have the fiction authors. So again, I just instantly thought of my son and we listened to and he barely knows it, but we listened to all the classical music from Star Wars, which is fantastic, right? But he feels like, do, 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 and he runs around the house and it, it's really fun. But also if you're nonfiction, if you're a leader, then you can also put on, you know, those really pumped up inspirational kinds of songs and, and things like that, or historical writers. Then you've got that memoirs that reflect the feelings of your emotions. Yeah, I think there could be a lot. Uh, we have people who write about the Highlands, so you might have a bunch of Scottish sounds. I, I love that. This is totally new. I've never thought or heard that one. That's a very good one. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Spotify also has a version of advertising as well, if you wanted to take a look into that. Um, but I think for, for just beginners, I think Facebook is the best place to start. Also having the same thing that you mentioned on Goodreads on your LinkedIn. In your title, you can change that to 
you know, Chelsea Hensley, author of XYZ, just as added visibility. Pinterest as well. Pinterest actually drives, I don't know if you'll believe this, but something like six times more traffic than Facebook or Twitter. I mean, I think the average is 50,000 per, like the average account is having 50,000 views. So if you could add some branded graphics or even the, the book cover and fill out that profile, I think that people are searching on there for best beach summer read. So maybe you add your book profile with the title, really great summer beach read. And then someone's right. going to see that and click on it and go to your website. Right. And with genres, that's super important because people are specific. They're looking for cozy detective stories, you know, and you think, what, what, or what do we say? Uh, zombie, you know, whatever. And if you use those in your title, that's your niche. And you should know that exactly. It really does click in and um, you'll also find out where your people are. When you search for it, you're going to find out more about your demographics, the people who are interested in the same things you are and would be a natural click for your book, your writing, your blog, whatever. Exactly. Okay. And don't be afraid to lean in to those crazy specific details. I know some people think, oh, but I want everyone to be my reader. I don't want to cut off anybody. Be as detailed as possible. No, not everybody's going to read your book. You know, I'm a, I'm a nonfiction and I love autobiographies and self-help and psychology. So you throw a romance in front of me and it's a little bit harder. Not that I wouldn't read it, but I'm not looking for you. So you are wasting your energy and your money and your click time trying to get me when, if you're over there writing your memoir, your autobiography or self-help or something like that, then of course you want to have me on your list. So it, it's a very interesting, only focus on what has a return. And because today we are neurologically overloaded, absolutely overloaded with options and sound and stimulation, and it's too much. So only focus on yours and then just remove all the distractions. Just is survival technique. <laughs> survival only. I love that. Absolutely. And then again, if you wanted to move into influencer outreach, and I know influencer is kind of a tricky word, but what I mean by influencer is find people who are prominent in your niche. You know, maybe your book is for stay at home moms, or maybe it's for people in the healthcare industry. Maybe you don't reach out to book reviewers specifically because that can pigeonhole you a little bit. But if it's for stay at home moms, for example, there are so many YouTube influencers that have millions of, of visitors and viewers and, and subscribers. If you could get them to just like your book enough to mention it and that right there, that return, that free organic return is really critical. Right. And you never know when it'll happen. You should be there anyhow, if that's your people. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there are paid methods of doing this. A lot of influencers will do an advertising based marketing share profit share. So that could be an option, or you could look into affiliate marketing, which is also a little bit of a profit share. But honestly, I love the good old fashioned. Hey, I think you could be interested in my book. I think it, I think your viewers could be really interested in this book. Take a look at it. Let me know what you think. And you know, nine times out of 10, they won't respond. But I think that one time out of 10 could be really magical. Right. I mean, it's authenticity and it's just about being open, I think, and, and really showing that you have an actual common interest. I mean, the best thing is to offer them something, offer whatever you can to help them and encourage that, you know, you're following them, you like this, do whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Be and good. being as genuine as possible, don't approach it as a sales pitch. That is the fastest way to be turned off. Be educational in an in a inviting, caretaking way. Right. Exactly. So I think, do you have any questions? I think we pretty much covered some of my favorite tips and basics for, for authors out there. Right. I think, you know, it's all about the branding and we decided that the pixel, the magical pixel, we're going to go find that and put that on there. I, I really do like this. I think we can go back through this a couple of times and, and discuss the different things there, but branding is about finding your people and then being true to who you are and con connecting authenticity there. So that's great. And I know that you have some opportunities here if people like to reach out and find out more because this can be overwhelming if you don't have time. So outsourcing is always an option and we, we definitely like to hear more about that. How do we contact you? 
please reach out to me again. My name is Chelsea Hensley. My website is rechargesocialmedia.com. And I think the easiest place to start if you really want to go to the next level of your marketing is I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, essentially. I call these power solving sessions. Basically, it's an hour of us brainstorming, putting together strategy, me auditing your current presence, telling you where you know opportunities most lie. And then mm -hmm. after that, I send you a one-page kind of wrap up with an action plan and then you go from there. And I think that that's a really great alternative to paying someone for a monthly retainer. If you've got a small budget, I think this is a really great option. Right. And I think that's good because then they walk away with steps that they can implement themselves or at least have on their long-term plan. Right. I mean, that's exactly what it's, we need. It's building that foundation. Mm. And I also think that, you know, a lot of this information is out there, all of these ideas, but it is, literally a month's worth of research and the clicking and that's not really probably most people's interest that's why they they find somebody else to help them along the path if it's your interest great then you're probably done with this but if it's not you're thinking i had no idea what do i do now so i would encourage you to go ahead and take take a chance and contact chelsea and find out more about this and get your plan for the next year because you cannot wait forever. Uh, ideally, most of your marketing needs to be happening while you are writing the book. And that's all about getting your business plan together. Of who is my, who are my people? What is my, my target focus? And who am I to be putting myself out there? And in terms of how am I going to represent myself and my, my brand and brand is a, is a dangerous word nowadays, but it's definitely the word. <laughs> <laughs> it is a word. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, very important. So thank you so much. Thank you. We'll put all that information below so that everyone can check that out. Please reach out to Chelsea. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us a little bit about marketing today, which can be totally overwhelming. And I hope that everyone walks away with just inspiration to get started and to not be put off by it and notice how many opportunities are out there. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you.